An elder once said, Erasers are made for those who make mistakes. To which a youth replied, Erasers are made for those who are willing to correct their mistakes. Attitude matters. And now the second part of our three-part series entitled Negativity, Part 2. Hello everyone, my name is Angel and this is Have Faith, Let It Begin. Well, I'm not going to make you wait. Well, you've been waiting for part two, so let's continue. The last time we spoke, we had gone over the review with my colleague and he had taken over the um, my score, our scores and he had put people on the island and he was using his um, dead weight of individuals. I hate calling it dead weight folks, but that was what we used in sales. So it's kind of hard for me to shift and call it something different. So I got to keep that lingo going because it just makes it easier for me to tell the story. So he would put his low producing sales reps, we call it dead weight, on my island, which was an island that was in between our two sales floor that was linked to my scores. And when it got to the point where I realized that I could turn these people around. I told him that he is no longer available to keep those sales reps. If he puts them on the island, he's forfeiting them. So I inherited them. I trained them, retrained them, and got them doing numbers that were just amazing. And we started to annihilate the gold and platinum um, side as we were prawns and silver. Well, (laughs) the reviews came out. His numbers were higher. Ultimately, he got a bonus. I did not. Now, the reason why I didn't get a bonus, because most, most of you would say, well, wait a minute. If he was a shift manager, that would mean he's in charge of, charge, in charge of the entire shift. And because he's entire, the, enti- entitled to the entire shift, doesn't that mean that you do well too? Very true. What I didn't realize was my manager scored me low for um, not being a team player. According to our manager, he was upset with the fact that I was complaining that my shift manager was putting representatives on my island and that he could do whatever he could as a shift manager to make the shift productible. So I got scored low on team, team, I guess it was called team. Uh, I'm, I'm going to rephrase it because I don't remember how they called it, but I, I wasn't a team player according to the manager. So now we're going to go on to the story. I wanted to do a real a quick recap. So now fast forward. <laughs> I talk, I got home and I cried and, you know, and listen, I'm not ashamed to tell you. I cried like a, I was a grown man. I cried and I called my father. Now, mind you, I was also right around this time going through my major breakup, which I, if you haven't heard my previous show, breakups and relationships, this is around the time that I was in my huge breakup. I was in the middle of a depression and work was the only thing at that time that was keeping me positive and keeping me motivated because I was so, I felt like I was good at it. My father said to me, and I'll never forget, he says, Angel, you have to turn things around. You have to stop concentrating on the negative and worry more about the positive. You have to do everything in your power to train these new hires so that when they do well and they eventually have to move up into his room, you are always constantly getting new hires. So what you want to do is get your new hires to the point where they're doing numbers that that no one can actually argue. They can look at the bottom line and say, wait a minute, which side is actually gold and platinum and where is your bronze and silver side? So it got me thinking. So I set up a time in a meeting with my staff because I had... Um, team leaders under me that would, you know, we had teams of uh, four. Um, There was a ratio, one team leader for every four um, reps, uh, representatives, operators, agents, you want to call them. And 
we had I had a team of three plus myself. And um, I sat them down and I said, listen, I says, we're going to change our structure. Um, even though there's a structure built into the company of bronze and silver. We're going to now call the room bronze, silver, and silver elite. We're going to treat our silver elite the way that platinum is being treated over there. And we're going to also hold more contests, more giveaways. We're going to change our environment in the room and decorate it. We're going to make this room the room that everybody wants to be a part of. So... I held a meeting. I welcomed our new hires again because pretty much, you know, in our job in our industry, as people would come in, some people found that the job wasn't for them and they would quit. That happened often. So we had a a floor about 28. Now the island was becoming more and more useful on his part, throwing the dead weight to me. So now I went up from 28 to 30, uh, 30, 28 to 32 stations. But the other stations, I couldn't really coach them because they weren't mine. But yet they would bring my numbers down, but I didn't coach them. So we started to perform and we started to promote this silver elite. People from next door would come over and watch and say, wow, they really treat their individuals really, really well. Their sales reps. Wow. They really go crazy when the bells ring. They really, he's really doing everything in his power to, you know, to make them feel at home. I wish I was on this sales floor. We'd have Taco Tuesday, Pizza Friday. We would do everything in my power. I would spend my own money to keep this room motivated. We were hitting numbers that were so high that, thank God, it was a, there was a time when there was a visit from regional, our regional manager. He shows up and he starts overseeing the rooms and he starts pulling reports. And he starts asking, which side is the bronze and which side is the platinum? And my manager looked at him and said, well, we like to think of things as if the whole room is platinum. The whole room is gold. We don't really want to talk about bronze and silver. We try to do things. And, I, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, he's trying to take credit for both floors. I can't believe this. So in that moment, I said to myself, what do you do? Do you come out and say he's lying? Then I wouldn't be a team player. Do you come out and say, I'm the one that came up with this idea, that I'm not a team player. So I decided to play the game. Be a team player, but do it in the right way. Remember last episode, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So when they came to me and they said, Angel, so you technically have the bronze side. How are you doing this? And now my manager was there because they were walking through and, you know, they, they pretty much talk on the sales floor. And he said, he says, so tell me, what'd you do? This is amazing work. I says, well, I'm going to tell you. I says, it's all about motivating. It's all about follow the follow through. It's all about, you know, listening and monitoring with our, our agents and then following up when they do their, they, they do something from negative to positive and we follow up and say, good work. We follow up and say, this is what you're, we're doing wrong. Now you're doing it right. Keep up the good work. We decided to do a buddy system where new hires would team up with other um, agents that were here maybe two or three weeks and they would learn from one another. And he says, that's a great idea. Did you come up with it? I says, no. That was, and he pointed to my manager and I said, that was him. He came up with this whole structure. It was his idea to do bronze, silver, and silver elite. And he looked at him and he goes, great job. And, you know, he looked at me with like, wow, I can't believe he gave me all the credit. And he took it. You think he would say, no, no, he'd be modest. Say, no, Angel had a big hand in it. Nope. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he looked over and he goes, now I noticed that the island is being used. Now, who's who's responsible for these? Now, we all know by telling the story that he's he complained after I complained and said that I wanted dibs on these people and he went back and said that I stole them from him. He says at that moment, oh, yeah, the, these are actually uh, Angel's agents, but um, they're they're the silver elite. So they, they come to the island and when they do well, they just come over to my side. He says, all right. 
So why aren't they doing the numbers? He says, well, you know, they, you know, they kind of need a little bit more work. And who's responsible for them? Well, Angel's responsible for them. He goes, really? He goes, so Angel's responsible for three team leaders, his staff, and now he's got to worry about this group of people that are in the middle of the sales room, but closer to your end. Who claims the numbers? He goes, well, technically I do, but um, he goes, excuse me? Well, I do because they're, you know, they are gold representatives. He goes, well, that's not fair. And I instantly clenched my fist and said, got him. We got you. Well, the manager immediately said, you know, the regional manager immediately said, listen, effective immediately, any and everyone that goes on the island is now Angel's representatives. If you move anyone to the island, they go to his numbers. Score one for us. After the regional manager left, we continued on this path. We continued dominating numbers. We continued to hit record numbers. And then it was time for me to go on a scheduled vacation. As I got ready to go on vacation, I put certain team leaders on my side in charge to oversee the sales floor. I told them what they needed to do. I explained to them, you know, do not deviate from the plan. Any and every, any and everyone that goes on the island, we claim. And if there's empty seats on our side, pull them from the island and put them in our room so that they're not, you know, taken back and forth from us. Put them on the schedule and we'll move forward. I went on vacation for one week. I was trying to get my mind clear because I was going through my breakup and my depression. When I returned back from my vacation, I walked into our sales floor. Now, let me be clear. In order to get to my sales floor, I have to walk in through the main entrance and the main entrance goes through the gold and platinum side first before I can get into my side. So as I walked into the building, and started walking through my manager's sales floor, I noticed that a lot of my bronze and silver representatives were on the gold side. My heart dropped. As I got closer and closer to my sales floor, I discovered that half of my agents and operators had been depleted, had been taken to the other side. When I got to my desk, I saw a note that said, your room is now half empty. You need to restructure your room because you need to get your staff in order. And by the way, I took two of your team leaders because my room is now fully staffed. So you're gonna have to also hire new managers because they're now on my side. And I'm gonna leave you again right there for today. And we will continue on with Negative Workforce Part 3. Trust and believe it does have an amazing ending. For Half Faith, let it begin. My name is Angel. Have a great weekend and we look forward to the conclusion of Negativity Part 3 October 8th, 2018 at 6 a.m. And I'll say this, make sure your trade tables are in the upright positions because we're coming in for an amazing landing. Stay tuned.